Daryl, uh, for for me, you've got a very impressive uh, portfolio, um, and uh, basically an entrepreneur from a very very young age and starting business at the age of 21, um, and starting numerous businesses. Uh, Daryl has been responsible for. Um, helping many, many uh, big brands and some of them CIMB, uh, Cellcom, Nestle, Sunway Group, just to name a few, but the list goes on, on digital marketing and online positioning. So that has been, uh, uh, and again, numerous awards for supporting young entrepreneurs as well. So Daryl, you've come a long way. Uh, thank you for thank you for being here today. Uh, and, and here goes our question. There are various um, uh, different levels of understanding when it comes to online and we found that a lot of SMEs uh, struggle with understanding how the platform really works. And so one of the questions that we've been getting from the crowd, um, and one of them is um, understanding what the different platforms do. Uh, for example, you know, we've got Facebook and a lot of people are on Facebook. Um, uh, in fact, the much older generation and the younger generation, they're all on Facebook. Then there is Instagram uh, recently. Yep. And then there's also LinkedIn. So there are all these different platforms. I know I'm on all of them, but I don't really yep. know how to differentiate um, how those work for business. So that's one of the questions that we're getting from, from the crowd. Right, great, great question. And I think this is uh, always a long-standing question. Uh, whether it's SME or corporate, uh, we first have to understand that uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they all have different behavior. And if um, we look at your audiences, I think must we have to always look at audiences. I always uh, tell our clients, always look at your audience, know where your platform is, instead of looking at platform first and then go in, uh, on a full-fledged marketing Approach. So if you look at the platforms of Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of them have different features, all of them have different age groups of people. Age if groups. you look at Facebook, people who are between 30 to 40, 50, 60, they're active on there. Instagram, a bit younger, you've got your teenagers, your campus. LinkedIn is very, very, very niche uh, for professionals. Right? So it right. doesn't matter what age of professionals, uh, as long as you are white collar, blue collar, uh, even students nowadays are on LinkedIn as well. So the different features allow you to grow your business and your content differently. And it's always boils down again to your audience, right? where your audience are. Uh, do you have a younger segment of audience, uh, your customers? Do you have an older segment of customers? Uh, or are you speaking to B2B instead of B2C? Or are you speaking to governments, for example? That is where the difference is in terms of your digital positioning and marketing for these um, active platforms here in Malaysia. In fact, one of the other active platforms we have not touched on, uh, I think it's, it's, it's quite difficult to go in that is YouTube and Twitter as well. Uh, oh. These few platforms are also quite uh, interesting, but I think the most uh, widely used ones here uh, in Malaysia is Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. They all have different characteristics uh, in terms of uh, positioning your business. Right. And if I if I were to be, um, you know, I might pick several different industries, you know, what industries are better for uh, Facebook? What industries are better for Instagram? Um, is there a, a, a certain type? I think uh, in, in general, it's very difficult to say, but if you are more uh, a business that is more educational, very, very educational, you go on Facebook, right? Longer uh, listings, longer content, longer type of articles, you go on Facebook because you can share so much more info in there. Uh, if you are more visual driven, F&B, if you are into the arts and entertainment, uh, Instagram is very good. Right, because you have a lot of behind the scenes, you can use Insta story and so on. And for LinkedIn, I think it's more for use for B2B type of businesses, right? Uh, throughout all industries, but if you're talking more to B2B and you're searching for people, uh, decision makers especially, then LinkedIn right. will be also good. Plan. I think a lot of um, good that has come out from social media is that um, 
the the rule of thumb is that we try not to replicate or mirror content from Instagram and Facebook and vice versa, right? Uh, having the same content on both platforms because of the behavior and the audiences, they might react to your content differently. So uh, we've seen a lot of clients or brands who take the easy way out to do that. Um, but the rightful way is that you try not to replicate your, your content. Uh, that is one ah. good tip. Uh, the other tools or features is that, uh, for example, like a Facebook group versus a Facebook page, which is better, you know, uh, for certain, we've, we've seen uh, uh, brands using group for different reasons and using groups as though they are pages, right? There are a slight difference because pages in sense, you can buy ads and so on. Groups is a very exclusive, you can have more forum type discussions in there. So it's very different behavior as well mm. and we're talking about social media here and uh, you know I, I i like this discussion on the features but you know i i i also see some smes do this where i have a social media page but i don't have a website right. now well, how, how do you feel about that so we keep them with facebook pages but they don't have a proper website or probably it's still wigs or it's still yes if you're talking to an SME or startup, I think uh, if you want something free, a Facebook page is uh, good enough, right? Because you can put all your information in there, even your operating hours, you can put in your, your visuals, your menu, even your catalog. Right? It's almost becoming a social website. Uh, but the thing is that having your own website gives you control. It gives you control over your domain. It gives you control over your content in the sense that you own your content. And now, uh, more than that, it helps you in your social uh, uh, media or rather your SEO ranking, right? So it gives you the added, uh, uh, the added uh, marketing boost uh, when people start searching for you on uh, search engines like Google. And thank you very much, Daryl, for talking a little okay. bit and helping us to see uh, the differences in the social media platforms and also I think addressing one of the things that I see uh, uh, out there a lot of uh, SMEs not representing themselves and maybe they have a Facebook page but they're not managing it well like I, like you like you brought up um, some of the pages is just copy and pasting um, their content across different platforms and that could be very detrimental because uh, of the target audience Correct, correct. So it's best to still keep it uh, different, but I do know because of resources, sometimes people do it. So try your best to give a good balance between the two. Or sometimes you can, a tip and trick is that if you would put out content or postings every day, try to maybe Monday do Facebook, Tuesday you do on Instagram. So you alternate it rather than having uh, postings every single day for two platforms. You still can have two mm. platforms, you can have it active, but maybe alternate days. And nowadays, social media, you don't exactly have to be talking every day as long as you provide quality content uh, versus quantity.